Hey everyone, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at Hoplo Machis from Chip Theory Games. This was Chip Theory Games' first big hit before the Too Many Bones and Cloud Spires of the world. And if you're not familiar, it is a game of arena combat set in kind of the Roman era. Now I'm covering this because Chip Theory Games sent it to me, and I really enjoy it. Uh, Liz from Beyond Solitaire reminded me about it in our Top Solo Games episode, and I wanted to play it some more. Now, there are three core games that are all standalone for this, and I polled the Patreon members to ask them which one they wanted to see, and uh, <laughs> the voting was exactly equal for all three sets. So I'm going to pick the two that I enjoy more and do two playthroughs. So this one is the smallest set. It's called Hoplomachus Origins. This is playable as a 1v1 competitive game or as a solo game, whereas the other sets are co-op, and I'll show you kind of how that works in the other video. And how solo play in Origins works is you go through a series of trials on three different maps, uh, fighting more and more difficult enemies, and you draft a little army to fight them, and they have a little AI, and you just try to beat them in the challenge. For the one that I'm showing, which is about halfway through the little solo challenge campaign, I have to defeat this big boss guy who uh, rolls a lot of dice and has an ability that makes him very tough to hurt. And to use him as an example, the key kind of characteristics in the game, you've got how much health they have, which is marked by little chips underneath them, uh, how far they can attack, their range, how far they can move, and how far their tactics range is, which will usually uh, govern how well they can play tactical abilities or some other things. Is how many dice they roll, black is the best and yellow is the weakest, and any abilities they have. So I have to draft six units and or tactics. So most of these are units, but then you'll see the ones with no numbers on the side. Those are tactics, which have like little one-time special abilities. And usually you can draft from the full set of over 20 chips, and if you own the other sets like I do, you can draft from even more. But here I'm keeping it to the original things I would have been able to draft. And the challenge I'm playing, the trial, I'm up to 9 out of 20, tells me I can only draft Zanadian from Xanadu or Roman units and tactics, which are the ones you see here. So first up a setup, I gotta pick six of these guys, and generally the units are gonna have more staying power, obviously, whereas the tactics will have either a one-time ability like stun or a kind of permanent debuff for distracted and hamstring. But you can only play one unit a turn and or one tactic a turn. So it sometimes makes sense to get some tactics just to kind of speed up how quickly your chips come out. Now for this particular one, which is the Atlantis challenge, the first unit I deploy in the game is going to be my leader. And I have to defeat their leader, the guy you saw, before they can defeat mine. So it makes sense to take a guy with a lot of life. So I think the obvious first draft choice is the defender. He's got five life. And uh, when you play your leader, they're doubled, so he's going to have 10 life for the enemies to defeat, which should make him pretty tanky. Now to run through his other abilities, he's a pretty weak fighter, but he has intercept blow, which means he can take damage for other people. Not great for my leader, of course. And he has reposition, which lets him move more if he doesn't attack that turn. Go through my other options, my Siloy, super fast, but has no attack. But he does have the distract ability, which makes enemies next to him weaker, and he can swap himself with uh, adjacent units. My Hoplite here can also move extra and can attack two people in a line with his spear. My Machimoy or Machimwa, I don't know. He's got a toss ability, that means he can uh, move somebody adjacent to him one space to the side. And he's got Bloodlust, which means once he's taken at least one damage, he gets an extra black die, so he becomes a really tough customer. And I've got two archers, really squishy, only two life, but they can shoot up to two away with decent attack. And they have an alt attack, long shot lets them shoot even farther, but weaker. And finally, Koriko, super fast, but not much life, and does an automatic hit without a roll, and uh, can move faster when she comes onto the board. Now, each of these challenges has a bit of a puzzle feel, because there's usually some kind of obvious thing you have to overcome. And for Gadir, it's his intimidate ability, which means no one who's within two hexes of him, his little uh, tactic range here, can attack him with a regular attack. So with that in mind, I want people who can do some kind of alternate attacks. Now, the Siloin might be good because he distracts people so he can weaken Gadir, so he's not attacking my units too well. The Korakos can do one hit automatically, and her true strike means she can ignore uh, defense abilities against basic attacks, so she could do some damage to him. The Archers also have alternate attacks that can hit him. They're long attacks, so it's only a single yellow die. So yeah, the other defender, the Hoplite, I'm not too interested in. Machimoy could be good because uh, the guy does have two kind of henchmen helping him, and this guy could definitely mess them up pretty well. Now, I do have some tactics. The hamstring would make one of their units not able to move anymore, but both of their units are ranged. You'll see them in a second, so I don't know if that would help me too much. Distracted makes one of their units unable to use anything except yellow dice, but by the way, none of these can be used against their boss, so it's not going to help me too much. And then finally, this is just a stun for one round where they can't do anything, which is, you know, decent, but not great. Honestly, I think I'm going to skip all those and just take the other archer and have six units ready to go. 
And to finish getting my forces ready, I can get their health. Now remember, the defender's going to get double health. They'll have 10. But everybody else I drafted is only 3 or 2, so they're all going to die pretty easily. Now here's our board for this particular challenge, the Atlantis board. You'll see there's some hexes in a pretty small battlefield. You got this trident spear in the middle, which is kind of a special item we can fight over. It can do uh, extra damage or summon these little sea monsters to attack. The board's also got some bloody little spawn hexes. So the enemy units are going to come out over here, and I'm going to be able to put mine over here. And these little solo guides, they have show placement. So in this case, their leader is going to go on that blood spot, the number one. And the other two guys are going to go on the other ones. And just to show you Gadir's henchmen, randomly chosen from the Atlantis units... Got a Spearman with three life who can lunge, means if he didn't move, he can attack for two range instead of one. And he's got true strike, which means he can ignore a lot of defense abilities. And the Atumni, who's an archer, so two range. He's got retaliate, which means if you hit him, he does damage automatically back to you. And he's got cover, which means if you move within two spaces of him, he shoots you with a yellow die automatically. So we'll just kind of randomly place those guys there. And then I've got my crew up here, and we're ready to get into the game. So in terms of the basics of play, the turns follow a set structure. First, you have your deploy phase. You can put up to one unit on an empty deployment hex in your side. And if you have a tactic, you can additionally deploy one tactic on either an enemy or a friendly unit within tactical range of one of your units. So like within one hex of a defender, for example. Now, I don't have any tactics. I didn't draft them, so we're not going to worry about that. Now, barring special powers, any units you deploy cannot move or attack this round. But for units that were already on the board and didn't get deployed this turn, next you have the movement. So each unit can move up to its movement value. And you can't move into or through any other units, so you just uh, can move in empty hexes. Then you have the attack step. So in whatever order you want, you resolve your attacks. You roll the indicated number of dice. The enemy has to be within their range. And the dice will show either an H for a hit or a blank for not. So it's either one damage or no damage for each die. And then that's it for the player turn. Really simple. So you just deploy a guy, move everybody that's already on the board, attack with everybody, done. Now, quick special note, if somebody ends their move on the trident spear, they can pick it up. They just put it under their guy. And basically, either as their attack, they can throw it at somebody up to three spaces away and do this kind of special alternate attack with three dice. Or they can throw it to an empty hex within three range and create a little sea monster on that hex. And you flip it to see which version of the sea monster you get. Meanwhile, for the enemy turn, you resolve the boss first, and you roll the four different colored dice, so one of each. And for each one that gets a hit, you resolve the indicated ability, and you go in order. So if you got, like, a blue and a yellow hit, you'll do the move and gain the cover skill, and then you'll do the take charge ability. So whichever ones get a hit, you resolve. After you resolve that, you move all the other units whenever order you want, and they'll move and then try to attack. And they have just some basic AI, depending on which scenario it is. So for this one, they all move toward the opposing leader, and then they attack uh, the opposing leader if they can. If not, the closest unit. If there's more than one closest unit, the weakest one, the one with the least health. And for the AI, you resolve any ties however you want. So like if somebody could move here or here and both are closest, I decide where they go. And that's it for the rules. If I can defeat their leader before they defeat my leader, I win. If not, I lose. So getting into the playthrough, I take the first turn. I have to put out my defender so he gets the double life and is my leader. Otherwise, I'd be putting out one of these weak guys and getting like four life or six life total. I don't really want him to be close to these uh, long range guys, so I'll start him over here. Although if I started him here with his reposition skill, he could run up and grab the trident. But the thing is, uh, Gadir has the ability to sometimes just teleport the trident to him no matter where it is. So there's not a good chance I'm going to be able to get that before he does. Okay, then I would do move, but I don't have anybody on the board who didn't just deploy. Then I would do attack, same thing. So we go right to the enemy turn. So I roll one of each color for Gadir. And yay, he gets everything hit. Beautiful. So we resolve these one at a time. First, he's going to move, and he's going to put the blue die on himself to show that next turn he'll shoot anybody that gets too close to him. So his movement preference is toward the closest opposing unit and then the weakest unit. So he's going to go toward my leader at this point, which I guess would be one, two, or two. Uh, I can pick. Doesn't really matter. Actually, let's put him here so he's farther away from my guys. Next, he'll summon the spear from wherever it is, or if he already has it, he'll throw it at me. So in this case, he just takes the spear. Then he'll take charge and move directly to the weakest unit, and his basic attack will become an alternate attack, which again is harder to defend against. So he just teleports straight wherever I want him, I guess here between some of my guys. And then finally, he does a basic attack, but because he's holding the spear, he's got the elevated skill. And there's a whole little guide to all the skills. It seems intimidating, but you only use a few of them in each game. So elevated means he does plus one damage if he hits at least once on a basic attack. So he rolls black, green, yellow. If he gets at least one hit, he'll do plus one damage. That's a three damage to my leader right off the bat. Yikes. All right, so if you want to see what a bad start looks like, that was it. <laughs> and 
I do put the blue die on him to remind me that if anybody moves to within his attack range, which would be one, they, he gets to roll a yellow die against them. All right, the Spearman's gonna charge towards my only unit. The attempt is gonna charge towards my only unit. And the Spearman can attack because he only has one range. He can use Lunge to have two range, but only when he didn't move. So he's out of range for this turn. And so it's my turn again, and I gotta figure out who to deploy. Corcos has the ready ability, which means she can move and attack the turn she's deployed. So I could just throw her down and deal one damage to the guy immediately, but then she'll probably get killed. Could put somebody stronger like Machimoy down, hope they hurt him because he wouldn't do anything this round, and then he could really smash them next turn. Or my archers have first strike, which means they could shoot right away. Now they couldn't use their good basic attack against the boss because they'd be within his tactics range, but they could like shoot the spearmen. Or I could put down the Siloy, who has the distract ability, which means the boss would be rolling three yellow dice instead of black, green, and yellow, which would certainly be a lot weaker because yellow only hit uh, one third of the time. Well, wise or dumb, I like the aggressive options. So I'm gonna put the archer down and try to kill the spearman this turn. <laughs> good luck. So my leader will run for one, which does mean this guy gets to roll a yellow against him with his cover ability. Yellow usually doesn't hit. Yay! Okay, now I can attack in whatever order I want. Now the defender can attack him because you can only use special attacks against him, not basic attacks. And the archer could use long shot for a single yellow, but I'd rather try to kill the spearman. The defender rolls a single black die. No, come on. There's only one miss on this die and I found it. And then the archer, one hit. So sadly, he's still got two life left. All right, now the enemy turn, let's hope for less. Ugh. All right, so he's missing the move special power, but he is gonna throw the spear at my leader. So it's a green, blue, yellow special attack. Oh my gosh. Well, this might be the shortest playthrough I've done. Now on a positive note, when he throws the spear at you, it immediately becomes part of your unit. So at least I'll have that. Can he just take charge? So he moves directly to the weakest unit, which is uh, my archer. And then he's gonna attack that archer. Our chances of survival are kind of slim. Ah, darn it. So there we go, first uh, blood for the boss. Which means now these guys are just going to attack my boss. Uh, he doesn't want to move at all. Blue and yellow. Oh my gosh. Down to two life, what? Well, if this guy rolls well. Oh no, okay, he's not in range yet, yay. And so it's back to my turn, and man, my choice to not bring a defender that could take hits for other people, not seeming too wise. So I'm thinking maybe I put in my silo and weaken the leader's attack. Maybe bring my archer and try to kill some people. I mean, the leader just crushing me seems like a bad thing. So let's put the silo here. His distractibility will make a deer only roll yellows. And now my defender pretty much wants to use the spear because this guy could just steal it next turn anyway if he doesn't. So I could run down here and then throw it at either of them. It would actually hurt the boss. Maybe that's what I do. I just try to kill the boss. I mean, I'm rolling three dice. If I get lucky, he could be half dead in one attack. But that'll give him the spear, and then he'll just probably throw it right back at me. So yeah, I think it makes more sense for me to run away and throw this at the spearman. And I could go over here instead and throw it at the Atomni. Yeah, sure, let's try that, because he does more damage. All right, so I throw the spear. It's green, blue, and yellow. Come on, come on, two hits. No! Wow, this is a game of them rolling amazingly and me rolling terribly. My chances of not being dead seem very slim here. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so he's gonna move and gain cover. But he wants to move towards the closest unit so he can just stay where he is. Then he's gonna summon the spear, which maybe isn't too bad for me, because it means this guy doesn't get the damage bonus and he can't use it this turn. Then he's gonna do a basic attack against the guy next to him. But they're all yellow, so I have a pretty good chance of being alive, yay! And since I missed completely, he doesn't even get the plus one damage from the spear, bonus. Now, unfortunately though, these units focus on the leader, not on anybody else, so I'm probably dead. We'll have him go here. Oh, but crud. Yeah, he won't be distracted by the silo because his true strike makes his regular attack count as an alternate attack, so the distractibility doesn't affect him. All right, come on, not two hits, not two hits, zero hits. Hey! We are alive for a second. Right, this guy's gonna attack for two more. Okay. Woo, one life. Okay, I still have a silo. Gosh, how can I not die? If I put the Quirkos down, she can do an auto hit on that guy and kill him. The Siloy can like swap with the Spearman to get him out of range, maybe? All right, well, let's try it. So since she has ready, she can actually act this turn. Uh, she's gonna get out of my defender's way, I think. Uh, but every time she moves within this guy's range, she gets to roll a yellow die against her. So if she like got fully out of range, well, I guess only one yellow die won't hurt. Hopefully he misses, yes. Oh, but crud, I don't want my defender to move through Deathland. 
And I'll definitely have the Siloy switch with him. Now that's a swap, it doesn't count as a move, so the boss doesn't get to attack. Oh, but the thing is, to escape his attack, I gotta move twice. So I'd be <laughs> suffering two yellow attacks to get out of range of a blue yellow. I guess that's better. Okay, first try. Yes? And then, oh, actually, wait. Reposition is an attack, so I can have her kill him first and then use reposition. That's an alternate ability that lets me move and I get away from the spearman. All right, so she does one hit automatically, so you are gone. And then I'll use his alternate attack to run away. And uh, they'll just hang out. You know what be lovely this turn? No hits. How about showing me no hits? Okay. All right, so it doesn't move, but he does throw the spear. And he first tries to target the leader, but I'm out of three range happily. So then he's going to throw it at my weakest unit, which is the Coracos. So if she survives, it'll go under her, but it's a green, blue, and yellow. Oh, wow, awesome. All right, then he automatically moves. Oh, no, to the weakest unit. That's my leader. No. Ah, uh, crud, he's not even distracted. I don't know. I guess I'll put him here. Man, I can't even have him attack Coracos. Okay, that's it. I'm going to be dead. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> That was a pretty quick one. Yikes. Yes, if I defended my defender better, I guess he couldn't really defend himself. Uh, they definitely got some lucky rolling. I could have been doing one damage a turn to him with Coracos. Got my archer out, shot him with that. Uh, but that did not work in my favor. Okay, so that was the first game of Hoplomachus. We'll upload the second one, which is uh, the bigger arena mode. Much less of kind of a knife fight in a toll booth like this one was. So it tends to <laughs> not have extreme results like we just saw. But hey, that happens sometimes. We'll see you at the next stop.